We're also very keen to introduce this tool, which we've found great success with. This simple tool allows us to take control of the high pressure pump by disconnecting it from the PCM, from the engine control module, and directly simulating a signal to the pressure control regulator, which is a, a mechanical hydraulic valve. In other words, the pressure is controlled on the exit route, return circuit back to the tank. By introducing this tool directly to that valve, the pressure control regulator, we can, through a simple program within this tool, force the pump to work harder, generating more pressure, and from that we can determine if the pump it has a potential to increase pressure. And what we're getting at here is, is the pump faulty, or is it a fault with another component? This helps us form this evaluation without the need to remove the high pressure pump. The last thing we want to do is to remove a component like a high pressure pump to find it's actually not responsible for the pressure loss. So later in the practical session, we'll be demonstrating this tool. The type of system we're looking at is what we call CP3, which has two devices which can be tested by this tool, a low pressure volume valve and a high pressure regulating valve. And both of those can be tested with this tool. We can also test the pump blind by disconnecting completely and just having a look at the, the, the ability of this pump to generate a basic pressure purely from the return spring in the pressure control valve. So there's a number of tests we can do with this tool. You can also use this tool to test injectors. It's capable of being used as a trigger box to fire injectors and test the activity through the solenoid. So once again, this is a tool we rely on during our a non-intrusive um, test procedure during the mechanical phase of testing. So this is going to come in with the back leakage test after serial communication. Well, welcome back. What I'd like to do is introduce the next concept of testing. I'd like to introduce this tool which is provided by one of our partners, Darwin Diesels. This allows me to interface with the high pressure pump by interpreting or interrupting the signals from the PCM. It has essentially three functions. A simple gauge to measure pressure via the pressure sensor. It allows me to drive the pressure control solenoid, which in our case is in the rail and or the volume control valve, which is on the priming side, the low pressure side of the high pressure pump. So we can control all these devices independently of the ECU and therefore prove the integrity of the high pressure pump. First of all, what I'd like to do is, well, I'm going to take my watch off for safety, is begin by doing a simple pressure test in the rail. Now, the first test I'd like to do is simply a default value. The, the ECU looks for a certain default. It's half a volt output from that sensor. Now, we have at the moment three options within this menu. High pressure gauge. In other words, it becomes simply um, a pressure gauge, a pump testing tool, and an injector interface. For the moment, I want to look at simple rail pressure. One of the first tests I always want to conduct is a proof test to see if the pressure sensor is actually active because if it isn't the ECU will not control the um, high pressure regulation. Key on engine off we should have somewhere around 20 bar pressure so we, and that's about half a volt in the uh, pressure sensor so by simply connecting the yellow cable into the pressure sensor and I've pre-installed a simple acupuncture probe Acupuncture probe is a, um, a thin needle which allows me to interface behind the, the pin without any damage to the wiring. I'd like to use this tool now as a simple pressure gauge. There's a couple of tests I want to conduct. One is a static key on engine off test to have a look at the... Um, um, it, it's, it's a proof test so that the ECU can see the rail pressure sensor is active and it's a plausible signal back to the ECU. I've supported the vehicle with additional power because some of these tests involving cranking tests by nature 
uh, are going to introduce voltage drops and the voltage drop will probably mean the tool will drop out in which case for cranking tests it then becomes ineffective. So I've supported the vehicle with a, a, a DC power supply uh, external from the vehicle battery. I'm going to enter pressure test and we have a key on uh, pressure now, 16 bar, which is the sort of figure we're looking for for a, a key on uh, static test, somewhere around 16, 20 bar. That proves to me there's about half a volt coming out of that sensor, which is a plausibility test conducted for the ECU. Once that sees that, the ECU then will control pressure regulation, that's the pressure regulating valve, and the volume valve will be in closed loop. So now I'm going to do a crank test. I anticipate 300 bar or more for a, a, an efficient pump. It's not just the figure we're looking at, it's the speed of increase. We need an instant 300 bar. The vehicle is capable of running probably from 200 bar upwards, but we need a good 300, 325 bar for a healthy pump and a very rapid response. Bear in mind this is dual control. We have volume control valve and we have pressure regulation. So if we can crank, please. Okay. Okay, 292 bar, quite satisfied with that. It took maybe a second, a second and a half to build up to that pressure, but quite happy with that, very effective. We could actually do a blind test where we disconnect the pressure control regulator and we're looking for minimum 60 bar, anything up to about 100 bar, but somewhere within that range. So, one more time cranking, please. Thank you. What that has tested is the integrity of the pressure regulator. Um, earlier on I explained that it's a fail-closed valve under the influence of a spring, and that spring has the ability to retain pressure in the rail of around about 60 to 80 bar. That's working quite fine. So we've done two things. We've done a static test, nearly 20 bar, We've done a cranking test and achieved just short of 300 bar and a blind test looking at the integrity of the ability of that valve to retain a certain amount of pressure. All of those tests have been done very promptly, very effectively, simply using this tool as a pressure gauge and no more. What I'd now like to do is introduce this tool to control this valve independently of the ECU. And we do that by applying a couple of simple adapters we remove ECU control, attach this interface, which now connects to the tool via that socket. So this tool now has control of that regulator. But we need to put this dummy load in so that the ECU thinks there is still a component there, because if it saw an open circuit, it would go into default. So we've, in effect, fooled the ECU. Right, we're now monitoring pressure. We have control of the pressure regulator. 